Immediately after getting the eighth pick, the first name many people said was Benedict Matherin out of Arizona. Is he the right pick for the Pelicans? Are there bigger holes in his game than we realized? Let's break it down in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Available wherever you get your podcast, and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. Here with y'all on this Thursday, breaking down one of the prospects I've been asked about the most, Benedict Matherin. I took him already in a Locked On NBA mock draft. But I may be having second thoughts a little bit about that. And I think if I were to be presented that question today, I don't know if I would be taking him at eight. So we'll get into what's to like about him, where the concerns are, and how he would fit with the team in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, breaking down the prospects you want to hear about, the topics you want to hear about, everything relevant to this Pelicans team, Monday through Friday, No paywall, anything like that, just free, hopefully awesome Pelicans talk every single day. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Tell a friend about the show and leave a five-star review with a comment every single day. And comment down below. That's really helpful. That's super helpful. Comment on YouTube. Whatever you want to say is cool with me. You want to just say comment? I dig it. It counts. You want to get in an argument or a fight with anyone else? Go go fight in the comments. I love it. More comments is only going to be a good thing here for Locked On Pelicans. So let's get into it. Let's get into Benedict Matherin, wing out of Arizona. There's a lot to like. Good size, right? We talked about it when talking about Dyson Daniels. You want size on the wing with skilled guys, and he fits a lot of that. At the combine, he was measuring 6'6 with shoes. He's got a 6'9 wingspan, weighs 205 pounds, and is a 20-year-old. Sophomore coming out of Arizona. And his second year at Arizona, he proved he could be, at least in college, a lead guard, their lead guy, their lead scorer, their go-to person. His freshman year, he was kind of relegated to catch and shooting from three, but he made almost 42% of those shots. That's a good number. He still shot well from three last season while taking on a way bigger usage and way bigger role, 37% from three, with, by the way, shooting 38.3% on catch and shoots. In those situations, averaging 17.7 points and 45% shooting overall, over 50% from two, alongside 5.6 rebounds and two and a half assists per game. Really good numbers. And when you watch him, he looks good, right? He's got an NBA ready body, 6'6", the 6'9 wingspan, 205 pounds, good solid size, and he's got very good athleticism with it. Elite, like upper echelon athleticism, no, but probably a tier down from that. Really good physical tools and his shot clean really really excellent high release point that allows him to hit those kind of high difficulty shots and even contested shots he can rise up and get that jumper off almost over most people especially from three that's really where he kind of excels crowded area it doesn't matter he's going to be able to rise above all of that and still shoot it no one's really going to be able to actually contest that shot I think that's a really important thing for skill set in the future in the NBA, making threes, watching in this in the playoffs. You got to make your threes. That's the big difference for a lot of these teams in the postseason. You need guys who can hit those high difficulty shots, and he does it, right? And he does it in catch and shoot situations, but he also does it a whole lot of other ways, right? Because he's really good off ball, I noticed. Really good movement. He's excellent coming off screens, good timing on when to cut. He sees space in the defense, and he just goes for it. So you set a pin down for him. He's chilling down in the paint. A guy goes and kind of sets a pick, and then he sp- they spring him up to the top of the three-point line. You can get him the ball while he's kind of still in motion. He'll get his feet planted. He'll be able to rise up, shoot it, and make it. Really good kind of working off ball. And in that sense, I see him in the NBA as a ready-to-go role player. Role player. Keep that in mind in a second when we talk about him in the next segment here. So I see him working really well in those type of situations. He can get downhill. He can get to the rim as well. But really, it's the shooting that kind of makes you go, whoa. 
So whether you're going to have him coming off screens, right, whether you're going to be running actions for him or not, working as an off-ball guy, defenses, without a doubt, are going to need to account for him with that. They're not, he's not someone that you can just kind of forget about or lose where he is on the court. He's, a, he's like a, a ready-to-go, ready-made NBA role player in my opinion, right now, with a little bit of creation. He's a good enough passer. He's not elite at creating for others. He's not elite at like, whoa, where did some of that come from? But he's a good enough passer, and he's willing to do it at times. So when he's barreling down the lane to the rim, he can definitely find the right kind of guy. He's got good enough size that he can make sure he can pass the ball over defenders to a guy rolling to the rim. Pairing him with Zion would be fun from that regard. So there's a lot to like about Benedict Matherin out of Arizona when you look at all of these things. That fits what I just said. A lot of what the Pelicans need and want in a guy. But I have some concerns, particularly on the defensive side of the ball, but I actually have some concerns about his offensive game too. Let's talk about that coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Before we do that though, today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by rockauto.com. I'm digging the three-day weekend we got coming up because I'm actually going to be outside in the sun working on my 1976 Corvette. Radiator's going in. I'm going to redo all the vacuum lines and everything, get those headlights popping up like they should. I'm excited for it. I ordered all of my stuff over at rockauto.com. It's downstairs the front of my by my front door ready to go. And so whenever I need parts for my cars and I work on them all myself, I go to rockauto.com because it's the cheapest prices you're going to find on whatever it is you might need for your vehicle. So you get to choose uh, whether, or sorry, so you can save time and money when choosing to use rockauto.com. Don't spend 30, 50, 100% more. Try to deal with chain stores. There's one not far from me. It's overpriced. They don't have the stuff that fits or works and it's not high quality a lot of the time. And I just don't, I don't go there. I'd rather get it from rockauto.com where I'm going to be able to choose kind of the parts that I want, the specifications that I want for my vehicles as well. And the prices are always going to be reliably low because that's what they do. It's a family business serving do-it-yourselfers, auto parts customers online for over 20 years. And they have everything you could need, like everything you could need. Even things as simple as you want to change your own oil, you need coolant. You're going to be able to get it cheaper over at rockauto.com. So go explore their easy to use website today. It really is easy. Your year, your make, your model. It's that simple. And they're going to show you everything you have for so you can find the solution to your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck. Right locked on in there. How did you hear about us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. And now for your next listen, go check out the Locked On NBA Big Board. Host Raphael Barlow from NBA Draft Junkies, breaking down all things NBA Draft. He's joined on there by a bunch of rotating hosts. And by the way, we're going to have one on tomorrow. Richard Stamen at Mavs Draft on Twitter, one of my favorite draft follows. Going to be coming on the show. We're going to be looking at this draft and what he thinks the Pelicans should be doing. So that's going to be in tomorrow's episode of Locked on Pelicans. But Locked on NBA Big Board, giving you an in-depth look into the NBA draft, mock drafts, player rankings, and of course, big boards. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts as part of the Locked on Podcast Network. All right, today we are breaking down our own prospects here, and it's Benedict Matherin out of Arizona. This is a guy that a lot of people really like, and my initial reaction was, if he's there at eight, you take him over a lot of the other guys. I I think he's actually going to fall a spot or two in my final big board going into the draft, and we'll do an updated big board a little bit into the future here, but I think he's actually going to drop a little bit. That's not a big knock on him. I think I'm just willing to elevate some guys ahead of him based on kind of what I've seen now that I've had some time to watch a whole lot more film on these guys, kind of see and read more about them on where I kind of start to rank them. So again, we just went over. There's a lot to like about Matherin, but I also have some worries and I want to start offensively with him, right? Good shooter. The shots there works well off ball. I love that. But that to me screams kind of role player, right? To me, he doesn't seem to be a lead guard and I don't know if he'll be able to kind of get those developments done to kind of be that lead guard, right? He's definitely not a lead playmaker. His passing isn't good enough. He's much better as a bit of a secondary creator. You know, he's not the guy who's going to swing some fancy passes. He's not going to really pull the strings on the defense, anything like that. Some of the passes he makes aren't great. And look, he's a little turnover prone too. His handle is far looser than you'd like, leading to some really bad and stupid turnovers. So when you kind of look at him, 
on a lower usage rate, it's great. The the higher that usage rate goes up, the more I'm like, eh, I, this this might not be the best. And part of that is, I don't know if he has the ability to be kind of an isolation, get your own shot off kind of score. When you look at him, again, good at counter situations from three, good at kind of movement threes, and he's decent enough at pull-up threes. I'll give him that too, right? But he struggles, one, at the rim against length and contact, doesn't finish through that well. Is that going to mean he won't be nearly as aggressive at the NBA level? The good for him, plus for him, was that, no, he was still aggressive and still trying to drive even when he wasn't finishing all that well in college, but it's going to be a whole lot harder at the NBA level. And then the biggest problem is he's not a three-level score. He does not have an in-between game whatsoever. Floaters, runners, none of that. He has none of that. In fact, he shot terribly, basically on two pointers that were outside of the paint. He was not good in that area uh, last year at Arizona whatsoever. So when defenses are tightening up on you and what they're going to give you is the mid-range, he doesn't have that. He might be able to develop it. The shot's good enough, I think, that he could, but he doesn't have that at all right now. So what he screams to me right now is role player. Good role player, above average to very good role player, I think, immediately in the NBA, but not a guy that you can have potentially running that second unit for New Orleans. And that concerns me. And then defensively, you look at him, despite having all of the tools, right? Good size, good wingspan, good, you know, good weight there. He's got the strength. He's not a good defender. He struggles fighting through screens. He doesn't navigate that type of stuff at all. And then he has pretty bad instincts defensively. There's times when he gambles and I just am going, what are you seeing? What are you trying to do there? And then there's other times where he needs to be a little bit more aggressive and like isn't. And so that kind of calibration seems a little bit off to me when it comes to Matherin. And, you know, when you have other good defenders right there who show better instincts and tools there, it makes me wonder if that's where you need to go on that side of the ball. Jeremy Sohan being kind of like the the high mark in this area for this draft class. So I have worries about his offensive game being the guy. Is this a guy you know, who has the highest ceiling compared to Dyson Daniels or even Shaden Sharp, who we talked about yesterday. And I don't know if his ceiling's actually higher than those guys now watching him play a whole lot more. He's still going to be a productive NBA player. I don't think there's really a doubt about that. But I don't know if he's like, oh, yeah, you can't miss prospect and the ceiling is all NBA. Like, that doesn't scream that to me. I don't know if his ceiling is necessarily going to be an all-star level kind of guy in the NBA. For the eighth overall pick, do you want to have that kind of ceiling? And I don't necessarily see that right now with Benedict Mather. And I might come around on it a little bit more, but the more I've watched him, like slightly less impressive. And does that worry you at the eighth spot? That, that can be the Twitter question down below. What do you think his ceiling is in the NBA? Is it all star? Is it all NBA? Is it good role player? Is it just solid starter? And are you comfortable drafting that at eight? Let me know in the comments down below on YouTube. I'm a little bit nervous about that. And so as I've watched him, particularly with the defensive struggles too, you know, what could his ceiling end up being? And I'm not so sure as I was once before. But does that mean I wouldn't draft him or would I if he's there at eight? Let's talk about that coming up here next and his fit with the Pelicans in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Before we get to that, though, today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by Truebill. Do you know why free trials were new without your consent? It's a business scam that's out to get you. Don't let greedy corporations pocket your money. Download Truebill to take control of your subscriptions today. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. And on average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. Because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill is going to make it incredibly easy. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in just one tap. And you also have a Truebill concierge who's there to help you just get discounts on the subscription services that you have already. And so that's why I love Truebill. They've helped over 2 million users save $100 million. Like Matthew B who says in a matter of seconds I saved $660 for the year on my direct TV bill. Saved $120 for the year on my Series XM bill and saved $840 a year on my car insurance. It's a whole lot of money saved right there. 
So don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. Go right now. Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. All right, and thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're breaking down everything you want to know about the prospects that you might be interested in the draft, giving you insight into what the Pelicans are thinking with that. We'll be covering free agency soon enough, too. I have some other topics I want to hit on this offseason as well. But it's a fun time to be a Pelicans fan, so make sure you are subscribed wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Tell a friend about the show. Don't let them be that friend who keeps screaming about some of these end-of-first-round guys that they're like, they should take him. This guy's amazing. You don't want that. I got friends like that. I try and set them straight. Make sure they're listening to Locked on Pelicans so they know the guys that are going to be in the Pelicans range and the pros and cons and why the Pelicans may or may not be looking at those guys. And it's going to be a fun season, so make sure you're with us and don't miss anything. Leave a five-star review with a comment and comment on YouTube. It takes like 30 seconds. You can even put comment. I saw two of them in yesterday's episode. I love it. We're just growing the comment, comment. Or you can even say, I here's your comment, Jake. All of that stuff, kind of fun. Makes me laugh. All right, so we are talking about Benedict Matherin. Uh, wing out of Arizona. A lot to like, but I'm starting to have more concerns about him than I did initially. And so if there was a mock draft today, I probably wouldn't take him at eight. I would probably go someone else. Maybe Dyson Daniels, maybe Jeremy Sohan, I think. But that doesn't mean I don't like this guy. Don't think he's a good prospect and wouldn't draft him. If the other names that I like aren't there on there, uh, on you know, available... I'm very comfortable taking Benedict Matherin. He would fit seamlessly into almost any NBA team as a very good role player. Secondary creator, secondary scorer, right? That's like kind of what he does right now and what I think he really will fit in in the NBA. I don't know if I love taking that at eight, but look, if you can get a productive player, that's better than not a productive player. And I actually, that sounds terrible, right? But no, I mean that. Get just good, solid NBA guys that are going to raise your floor and help you win. And that's what the Pelicans kind of need. And so I definitely think that Benedict Matherin fits that, right? Again, there's a lot to like. He's going to be a good three-point shooter in the league. No doubt about that. And he can do it off of a lot of variety of movements. You know, it's kind of similar to J.J. Redick. That dude coming off pin downs, elite shooter that you really need to account for and can really bend and open things up for Zion and Brandon Ingram and C.J. McCollum further down the line. He's also a secondary creator, right? Well, the Pelicans don't necessarily need a lead guard. They don't need a primary creator. They don't need a Chris Paul. They need a guy that can just help out enough. With a bunch of other playmakers and ball handlers on the team, he doesn't need to assume those roles, that role. That's great, right? Like, that's a good thing. You're not asking him to do what's out of his depth because the team's roster struggles. No, he fits perfectly kind of in that regard for everything. And then he is also really good on the fast break, something I think New Orleans wants to do a little bit more, would like to get out and run a little bit more. They weren't great at that this year, and they're not playing kind of in the Stan Van Gundy, Alvin Gentry way, but still I think would like a little bit more of that. You see him really trying to push the team in transition and really make sure these guys are getting out and running and screaming for the ball early and then being very decisive once he gets it. I think that fits in because they don't have a ton of guys that kind of act that way in the fast break. So when you look at all of that, that's that's good for right now. And then the issues around him, right? You know, he doesn't have a mid-range game. He's not kind of that go-to scorer. I don't think he can really kind of create his own shot necessarily, right, with the ball in his hand. You can learn that. Defensively, the struggles and everything like that, you can help teach him all of that with the right kind of guidance. And he's a guy that doesn't need to be NBA ready right now for this Pelicans team. So you have time to do all of that. So when you kind of look at all of the issues with him, they're all correctable. They're all things that with time he can absolutely improve upon. And when you have the physical talents that he does, very powerful players, the way I describe him, I like that. For a guy that doesn't need to be the man and come in and save this team or play a huge role necessarily his rookie year, That's a good position to be in. And so I would feel comfortable drafting Benedict Matherin and having the coaching staff, the front office, really work with him to bring him along. We've kind of talked about that a lot, right? You don't need this guy to contribute right away so you can think long term about them. Go for ceiling. Go for a guy that you think you can mold into the best player. And maybe that is Benedict Matherin because if he fixes that, if he were a three-level scorer, if he was more of like a go-to guy, I'd feel much better about him. 
But I do think that's something that can be developed, particularly when you look at that shot and that release. There's no reason he can't be a good pull-up mid-range shooter. When defenses are sagging off, he's starting to drive, realizes the rim's not going to be there. Elevate, shoot, make it. He'll be able to do that. Like, I have no doubt he'll be able to do that at the NBA level. And those are the reasons why I would still draft him at eight if he was there, depending on kind of the way the rest of the big board shakes out and who's been taken and who hasn't. So there you go. Are you sold on Benedict Matherin? Are you like me who's maybe a little bit more nervous about him? Did this show change your mind on that whatsoever? Let me know in the comments down below on YouTube. All right, and that's going to do it for this episode of Locked on Pelicans. Tomorrow, Richard Stamen is going to have a lot of fun talking the draft. I love his insight. He is super helpful with everything when it comes to that here. Um, so I'm really looking forward to having him on the show to talk about that at Mavs Draft. That's coming to you tomorrow. And thank you for listening to today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. I'll be back with y'all tomorrow.